So here we have another rational equation, and they keep getting more complicated, right? But the techniques we're going to use are just the same as always. I want to point out that even though it looks like we have two fractions, we have actually four fractions if you think about it this way. 5 is just 5 divided by 1. Delta is just delta divided by 1. Now we have four fractions, but you can see that two of them don't share the same denominators. So we have to fix that by multiplying by some crazy ones. So on the right, I'm going to multiply 5 by delta minus 6 over delta minus 6. Okay. On the left, I'm going to multiply it by the same one, delta minus 6. And once I finish through this, then everything can have delta minus 6s, and that's going to be a lot better for us. So going from left to right, I have delta times delta minus 6 over delta minus 6. Then I have a minus 11 delta. Let's just change that right now to a plus 11 delta over delta minus 6. I don't really like looking at negative signs all over the place. And where they cancel out, I like to just cancel them out so we don't get lost later on. Then we have 66 minus delta over 6 plus 5 times delta minus 6 over delta minus 6. That's great. Now, you could go ahead and combine these fractions. Uh, you could do all sorts of things. But what I like to do before we start digging any further into this is just cross out all those denominators. Because if you remember, when you have equal denominators on both sides of an equation, you can just cross them out. That equal sign really lets us do a lot that we couldn't do with regular fractions. So now I'm going to rewrite the top terms only. Delta squared minus 6 delta plus 11 delta equals 66 plus 5 delta minus 30. Okay, and now it's just the same thing we've done before where we're combining like terms. So I'm going to keep everything on the left because this looks like it's going to turn into a quadratic equation. And let's figure out the solutions here. Let's see. I have, I have to count up my deltas. I have negative 6 plus 11. Okay, so that's going to be negative 5. Okay, so that's negative 5 delta. And that's going to be equal to, well, 66 minus 30 is 36. And I still have that 5 delta. So let's bring the 5 delta over by subtracting. So we're going to have, oh, I'm sorry. That's embarrassing. What's negative 6 plus 11? It's not negative. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to subtract 5 delta from each side. And you see, that's going to cancel out my deltas, actually. So all I'm going to have left here is delta squared. I'm going to bring over the 36. I have delta squared minus 36 equals 0. That's the difference of squares. If you remember your trinomial identities, you don't need to think too hard about the factoring when it's a difference of squares. It's just delta minus 6 and delta plus 6 equals 0, which means we have two solutions here, not x. Here are our two solutions. Delta equals 6 and negative 6, okay? Now, before you walk away from the problem, we're not done yet. We have to look back at the denominators here to see what our domain restrictions are. And I want to point out something right here. See that delta minus 6 in the denominator? That means, since it's in the denominator, it can't be 0, because we're not allowed to divide by 0. So delta minus 6 can't be 0. That means delta can't be 6. This is a nice example where one of the solutions we found is OK, but one of them is no good. So when I write my final answer, I would just say delta equals negative 6 for this one.